and then the electric potential is negative the integral of the electric field. So we have uh, V2 minus V1 is equal to negative the integral of E dot dr. Okay? So if the electric potential is given to us, how can we derive the electric field from there? So we can have something like this potential as a function of x, y, z. This is a three-dimensional problem. So you could have 2x squared y minus 6yz squared plus 8z. So this is the, the physics one equivalent of force and uh, potential energy. They're connected. Force is the gradient, negative the gradient of potential energy, and potential energy is the integral of force, negative the integral of force. Well, this is kind of like potential energy, except it's just potential. So if I have the potential, the electric field as a function of x, y, z will be uh, minus the partial derivative of v with respect to x, i hat minus partial v partial y, j hat minus partial v partial z, k hat. You have to make sure when you're doing this not to forget the negative. You have to do the negative of the derivative. A lot of people forget when they're doing that, they forget the negative. So you're going to get the derivative with respect to x is going to be negative uh, 4xy. And then the derivative with respect to x of this is 0. The derivative with respect to x of this is 0. So that's it. So the electric field has a component in the x direction minus partial v partial y. So the derivative of this is going to be, uh, the derivative of this is uh, 2x squared. And then you have uh, the derivative of this with respect to y. So you've got to be careful with the signs here. So put parentheses here. First take the derivative of this with respect to y, which is the 2x squared minus the 6z squared, whatever is in front of the y, j hat. And then this negative comes from this negative, right? Therefore, you could distribute the negative and switch the two signs later on if you want. And then minus the derivative with respect to z, this has nothing. This has negative uh, 12 y z, right? Because when you're taking the derivative with respect to z, the y is a constant. So the 12, 2 comes down. So 12 y z negative plus 8 k hat. And the derivative of this with respect to z is 8. So now I can switch the signs, and the final answer will be like that negative 4xy i hat plus 6z squared minus 2x squared j hat and then here plus 12yz minus 8k hat so you switch the signs and then you get your final answer what if it's a one dimensional problem let's do a one dimensional version of this okay What if you have something like this? Okay. And then the electric field will be negative 4, the derivative of it with respect to x, negative 4x plus 6 i hat, right? So uh, this one, the derivative of that is 0. <clears throat> so now we could ask further questions and develop this and say, well, similar to how we did in physics 1, when we did with, with uh, just um, with forces and stuff, what does this look like? Can we visualize this? Well, when x is equal to, uh, when the electric field, when x is equal to, uh, if I set the electric field equal to zero, x is equal to what? Uh, negative six over negative four, which is three halves, which is one and a half, right? So, if I want to draw a graph of voltage versus x, what is that going to look like? At one and a half, uh, 
the electric field is zero, which means any particle placed there is going to experience no force. So it's going to be a local max or local min of the potential energy function, right? So uh, if I want to know if it's a local max or local min, I take the derivative of v with respect to x, which is 4x minus 6, right? This time, I'm not going to take negative the derivative. I'm just going to take positive the derivative. Then I'm going to take the second derivative, which is positive 4. So that means the graph is concave up. Okay. So uh, it's going to be something like this. The graph is going to look something like, at, at x equal to 0, the voltage is 8 volts. So it's going to look something like this. At x equals to 1.5, the potential has a local min, okay? So what is that equal to? Take 1.5, put it into here. 2 times 1.5 squared minus 6 times 1.5 plus 8. 3 and a half volts. So actually, it looks like this. volts and then this is 8 volts okay so now what's going to happen if I want to know what's going to happen to a charge that's placed on the x-axis I have to know whether or not that charge is negative or positive with with the physics one equivalent of this the mechanical equivalent there is no negative mass that I have to worry about there's just positive mass with charges I, I have to worry about so let's say you place a charge Q equal to 1 coulomb at x equals to 0. What happens to that? Well, what, now we have to graph the potential energy function. Potential energy is Q times V, right? So what's, what is the potential energy function going to look like? Q times V. Well, if the Q is positive, the potential energy function looks exactly the same as the potential function, except I just multiply the charge by the V. Well, if it's one coulomb, then that means the eight volts becomes eight joules. So it has eight joules here. And then at one and a half, it becomes uh, 3.5 joules. So what's going to happen? Well, the uh, charge is going to oscillate between the points x equals to 0 and some other point here. Okay, And by the time it reaches the x equals 1 and a half, it's going to have a certain velocity. So it's going to, it's going to lose potential energy and gain kinetic energy. Okay, What happens if the charge is negative? So for the positive charge, it's going to be driven towards the 1.5. Okay? Think about the number line here. Okay? So imagine here is 0, here is 1.5. I place a positive charge over here. Here's a different way of looking at this. Which direction is the electric field at x equals to 0? Which direction is the electric field? Well, we have the electric field function here, right? What's the electrical field at x equals to 0? 6 I had newtons per coulomb, right? If you put x equals 0 here. So that means the electrical field is pointing to the right. Okay? If you put a positive charge Q at the origin, which direction is it going to feel a force? To the right. So it, it's driven that way. Well, once you pass the 1.5, what's going to happen? Once you pass 1.5, the electrical field is now negative. So it looks like that, you see? So the electrical field vector can be uh, illustrated with like this, like this. 